We do have our next guest on the line, and we, ladies, probably don't remember. Of course, we've uh, interviewed a lot of uh, SNU Southern Nazarene University uh, faculty, and I think we started off. Our very first one was Dr. Hudson, who is director of marketing and professional and graduate studies. Good morning, Dr. Hudson. How are you doing this morning, sir? Good morning, you guys. I'm really happy to be back with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, give us, uh, give our listeners, uh, j- just in case they haven't heard some of the past interviews or whatever, a little bit of background here information about you and what you do there i as you mentioned i am director of professional and graduate studies so i work with all of our adult students you know we offer programs for traditional students you know folks who are coming fresh out of high school and going to college for the first time but then we have a a plethora of programs for adult students who want to come back to school and either complete that bachelor's degree that maybe they started but didn't finish because life does that thing or getting in the way or you want to go into a graduate degree so i work with all of our adult students Okay, okay. Well, well, let's start it off. Uh, Our listeners are listening right now. They've heard uh, a lot of different programs and and, and things like that. Why should they choose a small private university for, for their schooling? Well, you know, a, a graduate and adult programs are offered at just about every university across the state and across the city. You know, from large public institutions that we're all very familiar with to small private universities uh, that range from Shawnee to, to Bethany. Um, the, the thing that I think that's really important for your listeners to consider is when they're thinking about going back to school is what's best for them and what's going to offer them the program that's best suited for what they want to do in life. You know, most local universities, offer academically sound programs. The, the important thing about a small university is that, you know, one like Southern Nazarene, of course, is that it's going to give you that in the individualized attention mm-hmm. specific to your particular goals. You know, you're going to have a smaller classroom, fewer people in the class, flexible hours for, you know, busy working adults, just things that are really very, very important to most adult students. What about the debate over public or, or private? You know, that thing has been going on forever, you know, public schools versus private schools. The public schools, you know, get funding from the state, and there really is, I guess the thing I want to back up here and circle back and say, there really is no one-size-fits-all solution for everybody. Each individual student needs to find a thing that's going to fit their program fit their particular goals best, like I said at the beginning. Um, you know, you, you have to look at class size, funding, um, all these different things that, that are important to them. So public universities, as I was saying earlier, public universities get funding from the government, typically from the state and from the federal government. Um, private institutions survive on the tuition that comes from their students and then various kinds of donations they get for endowments that, that keep the school going. Incumbent with being a, a smaller private university is you get that, again, that inv- individualized attention that's specific to your particular program, specific to your particular goals that you may miss uh, in a larger in- institution where you're, I hate to say it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're a number, not not necessarily a person. And yeah. and that's, that's the beauty of, of being in a private institution is they're really focused on what's most important to you. I think that is, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, um, just listening to what you're saying, but a lot of people are, are still saying, you know, it's a lot of money to go to SNU. For those, I mean, just being quite honest, yeah. being frank and honest, a lot of people say it's expensive to go there. So will you just speak to those who are, are maybe thinking that and why it is such a great investment? Well, you know, um, there's that age old ads, you know, you pay the cost to be boss, you know, and, and, and you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. So, right. So I, <laughs> right. I've, got, I've got two boys in private school now. I went, uh, did most of my, well, actually, I did all of my work in private institutions. And I just really don't think you can be the academic rigor that comes out of a private institution. And again, I, I can't say enough about that individualized attention. So, so when mm-hmm. I. When I instruct my students, when I'm in the classroom or if I'm working with a student from a mentor perspective, it's one-on-one, and it's not one-on-three. And in a private institution, typically you're going to get the instructor, not a grad assistant. I mean, you're going to get someone who is doctorally prepared. You're going to get someone who has life experience they're going to bring into the classroom. It just, it just makes a big difference. So, yes, is it more expensive? Sometimes, yes, but not always. I mean, the thing you also want to consider is a lot of the private, insti- I mean, public institutions may have a lower tuition rate, but then by the time you add on the parking fee and the sports support fee and these various fees, 
frequently that they wind up being right in the same in the same ballpark as a private institution. Particularly here at Southern Nazarene, as we've mentioned to you guys before, it's an all-inclusive price. So that that price that you see for us is from the time you walk in the door to the time you cross the stage. I mean, it includes books, tuition, graduation regalia, uh, the whole the whole nine yards. So I think what's important is that your listeners do an apples to apples comparison and say, what's my total cost? here versus my total cost there when you add in all of the fees and the, the whole the whole shooting match. Okay? Now, Dr. Hudson, you said, you know, of course, you know, even before, you know, it just seems like when you think about school, for the most part, adults, you know, younger kids, whatever, younger adults, excuse me, they may be just stressed out even before the enrollment process, you know. You know, they look, they're looking at, oh, look at how much, like Nikki said, how much it's going to cost and how many cl- courses am I going to have to take and this and that or whatever. And it could become very overwhelming. But I will say, if anything, to kind of diffuse the stress, I mean, you kind of have to ask yourself, what works better for me? That might be evening courses. I personally love evening courses because it's, 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 more, it's more of a calmer pace. I mean, in the morning, it's busy and the hustle and bustle and parking and this and that, and that's just too much for me. And then, you know, uh, even in the course of the summertime, I mean, I don't know if you guys offer fast track courses, but those kind of help, you know, uh, along the way. And then I think another thing that uh, a lot of young people, and I always stress this to young people when they're talking to me about, you know, colleges. One of the one of the keys that I had to learn from my dad because he's a, a retired college professor is asking about the professors. Which ones are the ones that are there to help, and which are those that are going to stress you out and cause you to have gray hair at the age of twenty or thirty, you know, <laughs> years old? Those are some of the things that my dad used to share with me, and they actually do work because you want to be able to find the right professor that's going to make that easy experience for you and to make it very, you know, comfortable for you as far as your your learning process goes. Our are there any keys or any bullets that you have for our listeners this morning? Well, you make, you make some excellent points. I mean, obviously, at, at a public institution, a, a large public institution, your opportunity you would think your opportunity to have multiple different faculty members uh, is better because it's a large institution, but but that's not typically true. Mm-hmm. At a private institution, um, you're going to have that opportunity to, to visit with that professor before you go into the class. You have that opportunity to talk with them about what are the keys for success in, in, their, in their particular course that they're teaching. You will also see, more than likely, see that, that faculty member good or bad, see that faculty member multiple times throughout the course of your of your degree program with the, that you're here with us. Now, you touched on something about you know, accelerated courses and, and night courses. So all of, for all of our adult programs, they're all in the evening. For once a week, you, you go for four hours from 6 to 10 each evening, mm-hmm. and, and they're all accelerated. So if you're talking about our undergraduate programs, they're five weeks long. If you're talking about our graduate programs are six, each course is five weeks long, and and each graduate course is six weeks long. So it you're focusing on that one topic, that one subject for that five week period or for that six week period to ensure that you are giving your maximum best to that subject before you move on to the next thing. And and we have found that that is really the best way for adults to ensure that they are successful and they're sure, but they still get that academic rigor that they need to be able to learn what they need to learn from an academic perspective, but more importantly, to be able to take what they learn back to their jobs, back to their daily lives, and, and see some immediate impact from that. Well, if somebody's listening right now and maybe they had a you know bad experience when they uh, were maybe doing undergraduate or whatever and they were stacked in the classes, you know, what are, what, what do your classes look like, the sizes of the class? We... Typically, our classes run, range from a, about max. They actually we max out at twenty. So if you if oh, you're okay. in a class of more than twenty, um, that that's pretty rare. Right. Uh, typically, they average more on the ten to twelve range. I have one right now that only has eight students in it, but we we average about ten to twelve students. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah, good. it's that individual attention again. You know, yeah. I, I know when my students are not here. It's, mm-hmm. There's nobody else signing for you to say that you're there. I know when you're not there. Yeah, yeah. Well, somebody's listening right now. They're very impressed uh, with the program and things that you've shared as well as past uh, faculty members. Uh, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, well, again, we're always ready to, to assist your listeners. Uh, they can give us a call at 491 
I, I was I learned early. You got to back up and get the area code. Area code four five four nine one six three six three three two four five four nine one six three three two. And then of course you can jump on the web and go to snu.edu slash snu for adults, and that can get you right to us. And that's F O R adults for adults, right? Yes, that is correct. Thank you, sir. See, you, I like that. You, you, yeah. You've been out there looking, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on it, man. Come on, man. Come on. Thank you, man. Come on down here. We got you. All right, Dr. Hudson, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, so much, you. Thank Thank you. guys. Have a good one. Thank All right, you. you too. That's Dr. Hudson, of course, at uh, Southern Nazarene University. And they have a, a lot of great, all their staff, they've been pleasant, mm-hmm. very pleasant. So, sounds like a uh, great place to be. So, We'll take a break, come back more, open mic, 405-460-1140.